To dump in between you guys, you can add 3D objects and track them inside of your scene, inside of After Effects. And before we hop into this video, I gotta let you guys know about my editing packs and presets. They will be linked below. There is a ton of assets that are super fire and easy to use on my website down below. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. But starting off inside of After Effects here, you guys can see we have the completed effect. We just have this Babytron music video with these basketballs here. You guys can see they're floating and they're tracked perfectly to the scene. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can do this super easily. Now, it doesn't have to be basketballs in this case. You you could do anything using the website that I show you guys to get the 3D models off of. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything here just so we have our video footage and let's delete the camera track from that. So to start off, what you want to do is you want to go down, right click, hit new, and you're going to create a new solid here. And when you create your new solid, let's call it element. Now we are going to be using element 3D in this tutorial, but there is a workaround where you don't have to use element 3D. So make sure you guys stay to the very end to learn that. But just stick around, learn how to use Element 3D. It's probably the best plugin for After Effects. So now that we have this solid named Element, we're going to go ahead inside of Effects and Presets. And we're going to search Element in there as well. And we're going to drag and drop it onto our solid layer. All right. And now that we have all that set up, we want to go into Scene Setup here. And this is where we would import our 3D object. Now, where do you get your 3D objects? I'm going to go over to Brave Browser here. And if we open this up, you guys can see my whole order history for 3D objects. Going over to Sketchfab here, this is the best place to do it for the native After Effects, but I like to use TurboSquid for OBJs, so I'm going to go over to TurboSquid here, and I'm going to search Basketball. Now, you'd be searching anything in your case. We're going to go to Format here, I'm going to select OBJ. So you guys can see a lot of them are like $24, $10, $34, but you can get them for free. If you go over to Sketchfab here, there's a ton of them like this one here for completely free. I downloaded one off here for free, but I don't know why it's not showing up. Maybe because it's the fact that I downloaded it. But if I go up to downloads here, you guys can see I got this classic basketball for completely free. All you want to do to get inside of After Effects now with Element is go down and make sure it has an OBJ download. So you want to download the OBJ here and you also want to download the textures here. I'm going to show you guys how you can use those right now. So opening up After Effects again, we're going to go to the top left and hit import. Now I'm going to go to where I saved it and I'm going to open up the basketball OBJ. And I'm going to double click on that to bring it inside of here. And then we're going to hit just OK. So you guys can see we have the OBJ in here. It does not look normal because it has no textures on it. We're going to quickly go ahead and hit normalize size right here, which if you don't have it popped up, make sure you're clicked on the basketball and then hit normalize size here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit this arrow right here and open up the material. And now you guys can see under textures here, there are three textures that have been registered, but they are red, which means like the computer can't find them. So we're going to click on the first one here, which says diffuse. We can read it basketball, b-ball, mat, diffuse. So remember mat, diffuse. We're going to click on this now and then we're going to go over back to the folder and we're going to open up the textures one that we also downloaded. So going under gloss, let's look for mat, diffuse right here. We're going to double click on that and boom, you guys can see we're a step closer to having it look like the actual basketball. So let's fill in the rest of these red ones matching the text and then we'll move on. All right. Now that I have all the textures filled in, what you want to do next is hit OK. So here's a super sick strategy I can show you guys for matching it to your scene, matching the lighting, everything like that. So you want to go over to custom layers here and then open texture maps. And then under layer one, where it says none, we're going to hit the baby Tron music video clip. And then we're going to go back into scene setup now. And under environment right here, like we were doing before, we're going to hit none. And then this time, instead of hitting this box, we're going to hit this little arrow pointed down here. And we're going to pick custom layer one, which is our video. Now, if we hit OK, it's going to do its best to blend the video lighting to the basketball, which is super sick. So as you guys can see here, this basketball doesn't quite match the one that he's holding. So I'm gonna go inside of effects and search Lumetric color, and I'm gonna drag and drop that onto the element layer. Now opening up a basic correction here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the exposure and then the saturation as well, just so we get that orange. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the shadows down a little bit. And I think that is a pretty decent match. Maybe we could play the temperature a little bit. But I think that looks great there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close custom layers here and we're going to close the metric color and we're going to open up group one here and open up particle replicator and a particle look here. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to move our particle using position X and Y and we're going to place it where we want it. But if we go ahead and play it through, you guys can see that it's not tracked to the scene. So to track it, what you want to do is you want to click on our video. We're going to right click on it, click on track and stabilize and we're going to click track camera. Now we're going to turn the basketball layer off for now, just so we can see the track points. All right, I'm going to click on the advanced tab here. We have an error, average error of 1.6. I'm going to turn up the track point size. And then let's highlight this area right here. Right click and create solid on camera. 
so it's gonna look weird like this does not look tracked at all but let me show you guys some sauce to fixing it so i know it looks crazy but what you can actually do to fix it is send the basketball further back in the z space so if we turn up the particle size to something ridiculous and then like really send it in the z space you guys could see it looks a lot more tracked so if we just continually just do that you guys could see it's it's pretty much tracked that's a crazy hack for, you know, when tracking looks insanely difficult like that, you can just fix it super easily. All right, so now we're gonna go over and bring the position X, Y to the side here. And it's gonna be a lot more difficult since it's so far in the back. So I recommend doing like, just reading it, see like if I bring it to the side, it's like going up 300 and it's barely moving. Let's do like minus 15. I'm actually gonna move it a little bit more. Sweet, now that the basketball is tracked, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up multi-object here, hit enable multi-object. And then we're going to go over to rotation random and you guys can see if we spin that it's going to spin the ball i'm going to keyframe that go to the very end and then just like turn it a little bit so we have some movement i'm going to go ahead and just turn that up a little bit more and let's increase the size of the basketball as well and i'm actually going to move it to the side more all right it's looking good so now i'm going to increase the particle count you guys could see a ton more basketballs are spawning in here and then what we could do is go over to replicator effects, hit scatter, and then position noise. And if we play with the scatter here, you guys can see it's going to spread the balls apart. So if I make it something like a thousand, you guys can see it spreads the balls apart. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can make multiple balls, but in this case, we only want a few. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this element layer by pressing control D. And we're going to bring this back to zero. So the ball is like somewhat in the middle of the frame. And I'm just going to bring it over here. And let's see and play through to see if it cuts off. It does not, which is great. So we're going to bring it about maybe like here. Now that we have two balls in our scene, we're going to go to the very beginning again and turn off rotation random and then give it a little bit of a different rotation compared to the other one at the beginning. Keyframe it, go to the end and then move it just so it has a different rotation. That looks great there, guys. So now what we're going to do next to blend these in a little bit more is let's close the element tabs so everything's all organized and we're going to throw in some RSMB. I like to use RSMB Pro. It just adds motion blur. You guys can see the motion blur is added. And then if we search blur here, I really like to put on camera lens blur. I think the auto at five is really nice. And then boom, if we play this through, I think the effect looks super unique and really cool. And you guys can do this with pretty much anything you want. That looks great there, guys. Now deleting everything that we just created, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do the exact same thing without Element 3D. So we're going to go over to our browser and we're going to head over to Sketchfab now. So let's say we have this basketball. We want to make sure it's a .glb file. So if we hit download here, we want to go down to GLB and just download the biggest one, which is 10 megabytes. We're going to hit download and then hit save. We have our basketball GLB right here. I'm just going to drag it on from my second monitor and then hit OK. Hit OK again. And boom, you guys can see we have the basketball in there just like that. Now, if we open up this arrow here, hit transform and then just scale it down a little bit. And then let's play with the orientation just to kind of like show the center of the ball. And then maybe the position, scale, and then if we play it through, you guys can see it's not tracked to the scene. We have the ball, the 3D ball in there, but just to track it to the scene, it's just like before, guys. You want to create a camera. You guys can see it's insane movement. So same as before, we're going to turn the scale up. And then under position here, which is the Z1, which is the very last one, we're going to turn that up. You guys can see now it is tracked to the scene. It's a little bit shaky, so that just means you need to not have it so far, far back in the Z space. So just tweak it around until it looks to your liking. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave a like. I have tons of drag and drop 3D assets on my website. I guarantee you guys will like them if you go check them out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.